The LA Clippers started their two-game road trip to Oklahoma City, and it came with a little surprise. Kawhi Leonard, a late scratch, SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander, cleared to play, and it was not pretty for the Clippers as they got their second straight loss in a quite embarrassing fashion to the Thunder. Going to be talking about that all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. Your team every day. That's the model here at Locked On. And of course, for Locked On Clippers, I am your host, Darian Viziri, 18 years a Clipper fan. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my YouTube channel known as Dime Dropper, where I go live after Clipper games, sometimes Laker games as well, and film game day vlogs when I attend sporting events like Clipper games. So check that out. But for today's episode, going to be going into everything about this Oklahoma City game. The Clippers just played the first of two in Oklahoma City, and it was not pretty. The Clippers losing to the Thunder 94-108. to They trailed by as many as 26 points in this game. And in the last episode that I filmed or recorded on Tuesday, the Clippers were set to have Kawhi Leonard coming off the bench, and Shea Gilgis-Alexander was not supposed to play. But just hours before the game, as we so often have exp- has, as we so often have experienced as Clipper fans in the Kawhi Leonard era, there was a late scratch, and that late scratch was Kawhi Leonard. They said he was missing the game with knee management. About an hour later, it was reported that he had a little bit of stiffness in his knee, and they just wanted to check it out. So they're sending him back here to Los Angeles on Wednesday, and he will not be playing on Thursday either. So. You know, you want to think it's just precautionary, and it seems like it it is precautionary, but just hearing that there's already some kind of flare-up, already some kind of discomfort, it is normal considering he has been out and he's returning from such a serious injury, but it doesn't make you feel better as a Clipper fan, obviously, to hear that Kawhi Leonard already has something going on, that he's was was is already missing a game he was supposed to play. You know, I talked about in such depth that he... And so many times I talked about he's going to miss back-to-backs. But I thought he would be pretty solid the rest of the games. And that clearly isn't the case. He was... Not only did he not play in this game, but it turns out the Clippers were going to hold him out on Thursday. Which makes me realize that the Clippers are going extra, extra cautious when it comes to this regular season. Past what I even said in all the episodes I've done where he's going to be sitting back-to-backs. It seems like he's going to be sitting plenty more than that. And we have no timetable of when not only is the timetable of him starting, but when the minutes restriction will be off and when they're going to try to just play him as much as they can. Which, when I say that, I don't mean every game. I mean every game that's not a back-to-back. Because eventually... It seems like he won't be able to play 50 game. I'm sorry, 60 games, the target that I had placed for him in all the previous episodes. And that's going to be hard to fulfill that. I mean, obviously, the 60-win goal that I set, but also top three seed, which I said is so pivotal so many times to win a championship. But the Clippers' mentality is next man up. Paul George missed the game with a COVID-related, non-COVID-related illness. Marcus Morris out for personal reasons. So the Clippers, who so often show that next man up mentality, going to Oklahoma City. The tough part was Shea Gilgis-Alexander was cleared to play right before tip-off, and oh, did he put on a show. He was spectacular. From quarter number one, the Clippers did start the starting lineup that I suggested in the episode on Tuesday. Nicholas Patum in place of Marcus Morris and Terrence Mann in place of Paul George. And the defense was good. It was better in the first quarter. Shea Gilgis-Alexander, though, I mean, how far has he come? What 
a performance by him. He was hitting step backs. His The game has really just slowed down for him. The way he was able to get to the basket and not even turn on a speed burst. Just so crafty. Seems to have counters for about everything. And his footwork around the basket, the way he kind of takes, whether it's Euro steps or just elongated steps around that, ba- around that basket when he gets in the paint, is masterful. And he was showing signs of that his rookie year with the Clippers as well. But he could not be stopped. The Clippers' best shot against him was Terrence Mann. And Terrence Mann even had some moments where he got cooked, but he was the best point-of-attack defender on him. The one thing that was sticking out already in the first quarter, if it's Zubats in drop coverage, he was so good playing help defense and just protecting the rim. He was incredible all game long. Again, if it's Zubats was one of the only bright spots of this game. He has had three good games out of four, been arguably the Clippers' best player so far this season. 10 points, 14 boards, and a career-high seven blocks on 5-for-9 shooting in 35 minutes. And that being said, he should have played more minutes. But he was spectacular. However, the Clippers' offense, again, got off to a slow start, only scored 18 points in the first quarter. And the two guys that I talked about so... that I'm sorry, the two guys I talked about that needed to step up Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell did not. And in the first quarter, I noticed that the Oklahoma City Thunder were playing the pick and roll straight up, which was causing the Clippers to get a lot better offensive possessions, moving the ball, some open threes, open mid-ranges and floaters. But Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell just did not start off hitting them. And I was just like, oh my God, here we go again. It was tough. Thankfully, the Clippers were only down five going into the second quarter. And they were basically neck and neck the entire second quarter. They were up 43 to 42 with about two to three, two or three minutes left in the first half. And that would be the last lead that they had. The Oklahoma City Thunder ended the half well. Again, the Clippers went with the same 10 man rotation that I thought would play Amir Coffey. I'm sorry, not 10 man rotation. Kawhi was scratched. So it was a nine man rotation of Robert Covington, John Wall, Luke Kennard, and Amir Coffey. All three of them got 21 minutes or more. And Luke Kennard, I thought was good. You know, he came off the bench, shot the ball well. He's missed a couple of threes, but overall shot three for seven from deep, six for 13 from the field in 29 minutes, and had 15 points and four rebounds. And he did compete on defense. But the thing that was tough was when Zubats went to the bench, again, the Clippers went to the small ball lineup, and it wasn't terrible in the first half, but I started noticing there was a problem, and that was rebounding again not getting rebounds. The Clippers had seven offensive rebounds in the game. The Oklahoma City Thunder had 21. I said that correctly. 21 offensive rebounds in the game to seven. The overall rebounding battle was 60 to 47 in favor of the Thunder. And you know the old phrase that Pat Riley loved to use, and I use it all the time. No rebounds, no rings. And the Clippers gonna need to rebound a lot better outside of Ivica Zubats if they want to improve as a team and get to the level that they want to reach, and that is the championship level. In addition to that, it was the third quarter that really screwed the Clippers up and threw away the game. And it's funny because it's been the third quarter in the first three games that's been the quarter that the Clippers have won. But they were really, really lethargic in this quarter. You thought you were going to get a response from the average first half where it just seemed like shots weren't falling. But they were getting outworked a little bit. And they really got outworked in the third quarter. And it started with carelessness with the ball yet again, mainly from Reggie Jackson just throwing reckless passes up the court looking like he was just going through the motions and some guys just getting blown by on defense way too easily it was appalling the effort in that third quarter especially considering the way the Clippers played against the Suns you thought they would have more urgency and see this game as a game that they needed to get but that third quarter they started turning the ball over like crazy and SGA was just destroying them Just getting to the basket, scoring in transition. And, you know, to be fair to the Thunder, that Wiggins kid, Aaron Wiggins, in his second season, he was really impressive. Had a lot of shifty niftiness to his game. Had some tough finishes. Showed some athleticism. He shot 5 for 14, but he had 11 points and 10 boards and was very impressive. And another guy who was very impressive and showed his athleticism and skill was Trey Mann. 25 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists for him on 10 for 24 shooting. And in the third quarter, the Thunder outscored the Clippers 35-25. to They led by as many as 26 and were just taking advantage of the constant Clipper turnovers. Norman Powell, Reggie Jackson, 
just not doing their thing. Reggie Jackson taking some tough shots and just not having himself a game. And then Ivica Zubats was subbed out of the game earlier than I expected in that third quarter. At the 7.45 mark, he came out, and the Clippers were down 48-62. to And then he comes in around four minutes later at the three-and-a-half-minute mark, and the Clippers are down 52-74. So they were outscored 12-4 to with him off the court in that stretch. And part of it was because the Clippers st- thought they couldn't guard Shea Gilgis-Alexander anymore, so they started blitzing him on screens, and he was making those passes, and they were getting in four-on-three situations, the Thunder. And a lot of Clipper players, particularly Norman Powell, and at times, Nico Batum and Robert Covington on the wings were falling asleep on defense, and they were getting wide open layups under the basket. There was no resistance without Ivica Zubats. It was pathetic. And then Luke Kennard and John Wall came in the game and weathered the storm a bit. John Wall and Luke Kennard were actually the only Clipper players that played 20 or more minutes that were positive in the plus minus category. They were each plus two, everyone else was a minus. Except for Amir Coffey, actually. Amir Coffey was plus 13, the highest of any Clipper. He and Terrence Mann showed that athleticism. The Clippers may need to lean on a little bit more. Their defense is good and they have good length. Terrence Mann, I do still think he's argue, he's probably the best point of attack defender the Clippers had. He had an okay game, not a great third quarter stretch. But overall, he had nine points. He did hit the first shot of the game for the Clippers on a three ball. That was the only three shot, and he made it. And was three for five from the field in 26 minutes. So, And he also had nine rebounds and showed the ability that I mentioned in the last episode to cut without the ball and scored a couple times off of it. So Terrence Mann, I do think he needs to get more minutes. As maybe does Amir Coffey. If Norman Powell and Reggie Jackson are going to continue to play like this, I mean... We're going to have to have some discussions. And coming up, I'm going to go in a little bit more depth about Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell and the little, you know, you can call it a fake run that the Clippers made. Going to be going in more depth about that coming up. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You just got to put the purple hashtag hiring frame and add it to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And of course, if you're looking for a job, LinkedIn is a great place to go. I got one of my jobs on LinkedIn working for the LA Rams. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Finish the year strong by hiring the right team member on LinkedIn. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, to pick up where we left off, Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell have really, really been struggling. And again, it was another tough game for them. The Clippers did make a little run and cut it down to 12. Reggie and Norman had a couple of shots, but they just couldn't close the gap. And they dug themselves another hole too deep. And for the second consecutive game, Ty Lu had to wave the white flag as the bench came in and Moses Brown got three minutes and Brandon Boston got three minutes and scored six points on three for four shooting in that time. But a, a really, really big missed opportunity for the Clippers. You know, I talked about this these first 10 games and thinking the Clippers can go eight and two or nine and one. And these Oklahoma City Thunder games were games that I considered wins on the schedule not easy wins but wins on the schedule and you know you want to talk about how shorthanded the Clippers are you can talk about it but Josh Giddy, the second best player on this Oklahoma City Thunder team didn't play as well so the Clippers weren't the only one shorthanded and you really expect a better effort coming off of that loss to Phoenix and you didn't really get that you know Ty Lue said that the effort was good I disagree honestly I don't think the effort was good enough, especially in the third quarter. I thought the team started being really reckless with the ball. Even John Wall had a couple of turnovers. And it's like that's got to have been a point of emphasis for the Clippers in the first couple of games that they're turning the ball over too much and they're already down double digits and still being careless with the ball. They're not taking good risks. You know, some of them were just like slipping out of people's hands, not communicating with teammates. It was just very, very poor. 
you know, for a team that has championship aspirations and has come into this season talking about how focused they are, it doesn't really seem that way. They haven't played a, haven't had a great performance yet. The best performance was the Sacramento Kings game. And that was a solid performance. The only game that Reggie Jackson played well, and maybe those things are correlated. Maybe with the role that he's been given right now, starting at point guard, if Reggie Jackson plays well, the Clippers could win. And Reggie Jackson, if he's injured with a groin injury, the Clippers need to rest him. Because right now he's not helping the team at all. His defense is very mediocre. Then that's putting it nicely. And he's not taking great shots. He's not making any shots. Tonight, three for 13. I'm sorry, four for, he was three for 13 at one point, but he ended four for 17 from the field and one for six from deep. He didn't get to the line once and he turned the ball over three times. He had nine points and six assists. That's just not going to cut it for Reggie Jackson in 30 minutes of play. And the most frustrating part was in the fourth quarter when the Clippers kind of were down 12, John Wall didn't get back in the game. And it was just Reggie Jackson after he had had a poor night continuing to doing what he was doing. And it was tough. I mean, the Clippers just having all these restrictions is really holding them back from hitting this regular season and hitting the ground running the way that I wanted them to and the way that some Clipper fans wanted them to. And yeah, it's, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. But the Clippers haven't won a championship. So I was hoping to see a little difference in approach. But it seems like their approach is going to be just very, very cautious. And I just wonder if the Clippers will be able to get a top three seed with the extra caution with guys like John Wall, with guys like Kawhi and Paul George. Because this is not a way to build continuity and rhythm. You, I talked about this problem in 2021. You know, when guys are constantly having their roles change on a night-to-night basis, one night Reggie Jackson has to drop 20, the next night he has to drop 10 and play without the ball more. It's, you know, you should be able to adapt to these things, but it's not easy. It's, you know, it's very easier said than done. And you would like to not have that, it's the 25th different starting lineup again, kind of season and you really hope that soon the Kawhi stuff can blow over and hopefully Paul George plays next game because that was a really brutal loss the Clippers are now two and two having lost two straight games by double digits and they need to show everybody at some point that they're here and you know it's very early I don't want to be too over you know I don't want to over exaggerate too much and be too reactionary it's just that with the only new addition to this team is really John Wall. And you can argue Norman Powell because he only played four, three games in the regular season last year for the Clippers, or five games. But everyone else has played together. So the only thing the Clippers are trying to figure out is rotations, lineups, what combinations work. And again, it just feels like we're always waiting for something with the Clipper team. And that's what can be very frustrating. I think Ty Lue, as much as I think he's one of the best coaches in the NBA, I don't think he started the season very well because I think at times... He needs to play and prioritize Zubats more. And t- you can argue Terrence Mann's played too little and Reggie Jackson's played too much. You know, 30 minutes again for Reggie Jackson tonight. Norman Powell played 30 minutes and again, not bringing what the Clippers expect from him in a game like this. Seven points, two assists, four turnovers, and three for 10 from the field and 0 for 5 from three. The Clippers shot 10 for 31 from deep. And the field, here's the biggest, most ridiculous stat of all. The Clippers were 35 for 83 from the field tonight. On I'm sorry, on Tuesday night. Shot 42% from the field. They were 10 for 31 from three, shooting 32% from three. Now, mind you, the number was 83 for shot attempts for the Clippers. For the Oklahoma City Thunder, 110 they shot 27 more shot attempts than the Clippers. They were 4 for 30 from deep. Terrible percentage. 13% from deep. They only made four threes, yet they beat the Clippers handily. Handily. And that's because they took care of the ball. They only had five turnovers. The Clippers had 19. Unacceptable. And then offensive rebounds, I already said. All of that together added up to 27 more shot attempts for the Thunder. They were just the more lively team, the more energetic team. And one of the traits of championship teams is they're not supposed to you know, accept losing two games in a row. And not only did they lose two games in a row, the Clippers, they got destroyed. But again, the main focus is for this team to peak later down the line. It's very early, so don't take it too seriously. It's just tough to see because the schedule is just a gimme. You really want to start the season well. 
but the long haul is more important and the Clippers are working guys back slowly but surely. And coming up, I'm going to just be going over some little finishing touches about the game, what the Clippers need to improve on on Thursday when they play this very team again. The LA Clippers, despite the loss to the Thunder, are still third in the third highest, have the third highest odds to win the championship. They are plus 700. The Boston Celtics have now taken the lead and they are the favorite to win the championship as of Halloween. They are plus 575 on Bet Online. And you got to go to Bet Online to place your bet on any of these teams. It's your number one source for all your f- basketball, football, baseball, betting needs. F- you can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fast and, fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MMA, soccer, baseball, boxing, and golf. Just head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So this was a really tough one, guys. And it's just, I don't want to be too negative, obviously, because the season just started. But there's got to be a little bit more urgency, in my opinion. You know, the players that played especially the starting backcourt, I think if there's any way that John Wall can play more minutes than he's playing or can start, that change needs to be made soon. I think Reggie Jackson is great. I love him. But right now he's just not playing well. He needs to sit. He needs to rest. He clearly has some kind of injury because I've seen him play much harder than this. And it's also not a... I understand you want to play, keep players confident, but you got to do what's best for the team in the end. And John Wall is probably going to have to start. He's a better defender. He gives the Clippers a lot more, and he's just a better player right now. And he's always been a better player. And he has started the season well. i got to give John Wall credit. 12 points on 4 for 9 shooting, 3 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. He did turn the ball over 4 times, which there were some passes also in the third quarter that were reckless. But he's still putting that effort. He's still bringing in a lot of energy to the Clipper team. And him and Ivica Zubats have started the season well. That, those are some bright spots. The Clippers really missed Marcus Morris Sr., though, in this game. The way he started the season, they needed the scoring punch. The Clippers' offense has just been pretty abysmal. I think the, what the Thunder did, especially when the Clippers went small, when Zubats came out of the game, they started switching everything again. And it was the same story yet again. Clippers struggling to create shots because now you don't even have Marcus Morris. You just have Reggie Jackson and Norman Powell. And even Luke Kennard was trying to create some more shots. And he did. He shot 6 for 13. But Reggie Jackson, Norman Powell, in games like that, you're going to need a lot more. With the three best scorers in the team as of now out with Kawhi, Paul, and Marcus Morris, you're going to need those guys to be better. And I think a takeaway from this game is that Amir Coffey and Terrence Mann need to play more. Yes, even if that comes at the expense of Norman Powell and Reggie Jackson. I think you also have to sit Reggie Jackson probably for the next game if he's not 100%. And it's going to be tough. You know, I'd, I'd assume Josh Giddy may come back on Thursday. And the Thunder, you know, they that was their first win of the season. You've now given them a little bit of life. That game on Thursday is not going to be easy. Hopefully the Clippers get Paul George back because they really need all the help they can get. Right now, I, I really don't trust Reggie and Norman Powell. Now, I'm not going to say anything outlandish, like they need to be traded or anything like that. It's way too early in the season for that. But Ty Lue, you know, if you recall Clipper Nation, last season the Clippers were 1-4 in four to start the year, and he slowly started figuring it out and figuring out the patterns that he likes. The only thing I'm concerned about is hopefully players play enough that he can start figuring patterns, figuring out patterns that he likes. That's my only concern. That That's, you know, constantly having guys out. It's very hard to build any sort of con- continuity, and I think the Clippers really need that. And, you know, yes, it's not the regular season that's so important. But the process is important. I think at times over the years, the Clippers have taken the regular season lightly. And everyone says, you know, would you rather these players be healthy for games in October or healthy in June? Of course, the answer is healthy in June, April, May. But I'm going to keep saying it. In 2021, the Clippers were very cautious with Kawhi Leonard's knee. 
he was fine with his knee, but then he sustained a new injury in the playoffs. So there's always a chance that someone gets hurt in the playoffs, and it just makes these regular season games harder. And it's harder to have these great seasons when you're constantly worrying about the long term. But there's only one winner at the end of the day. There's only one winner at the end of the day. And yes, if Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are healthy, I like the Clippers' chances. But I don't like their chances if they haven't built really, really good rhythm and like a winning streak or something where you can be confident about their play, not just the names on the jerseys to go off of. And the Clippers need their team healthy and need the restrictions off these players in order to do that. And I don't think you can really gauge this team until Kawhi Leonard starts. So patience, Clipper Nation. It's not a big deal. I know it's frustrating, but you got to keep perspective. It's a marathon. There's 78 games left, and the Clippers' best version is definitely ahead because, oh no, boy, it can't get worse. Anyways, the keys for the game are the big mistakes. The Clippers need to take care of the ball better on Thursday. 19 turnovers is way too much. Got to create more turnovers as well. Got to be more alert in terms of their off-ball defense, but also on the ball. Can't be getting blown by so easily and need a better game from the starting backcourt, whoever that is. Reggie Jackson may not play, but Norman Powell needs to be better, and hopefully, hopefully the Clippers can get Paul George back. But Norman Powell needs to be better, whether Paul George plays or not. And I think you can play Vitsi Zubac 38 minutes for once, maybe 40, one time. He's playing so well right now. He deserves the minutes. The thing is, you don't want to tire Zoo out. We never discussed that. The fact that he's the only player on the Clippers that seems to be healthy all the time, knock on wood. He's been great to start the season, so that's a real plus. Seven blocks, I mean. Nico Batum, he had eight points in 18 minutes. He also had four rebounds, and I don't think he was bad. Can be a little bit better. But I don't think he was that bad. I think at times his rotations were a little poor and he got got blown by once or twice. But overall, Nico has been decent to start the season as well. I think he should honestly honestly get a little bit more minutes. But the way Amir Coffey played when he came in, was able to get to the basket, made some athletic plays, adds a lot of athleticism to our team alongside Terrence Mann. So maybe you have to look at that. Again, it's going to be very tough decisions for Ty to make. There's so many good players in this team, but a lot of players are on the same level, and that's what makes it hard. But yeah, Clipper Nation, keep the faith. It's a long season. And make sure, though, you comment on the YouTube channel and subscribe to it. It's the fastest way to grow the show. Comment on the YouTube channel. Do you think this method is sustainable for the Clippers to accomplish, to get a top three seed, I should say? Do you think the way the Clippers are approaching the season right now, can they still get a top three seed approaching it this way? That is the YouTube question of the day. Make sure to comment and make sure to subscribe to grow the channel. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at DimeDropperPod on Instagram as well. Same handle. And, of course, subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper. I went live after the game as well. So I was was very angry for locked on. I get to cool down a little bit and keep a cooler head and reflect a little bit more. But thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. You already know the age-old proverb, go Clippers.